presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport. In the show, Emir Prajcic talks before the game of the week. Dimitris Diamantidis is a never-ending star. Karl Heinz is seeking his personal three-peat in Moscow. We follow in the footsteps of Brent Petway. And of course, we have the MVP of the round and the top three plays. The only thing he cannot do is play as centre, at least not yet. Everything else is possible for Emir Predzic of Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul, whose versatility makes him Mr. All-Rounder. And this is thanks to one man in particular. The most comfortable I am on the small forward for sure. It's natural for me to play like most position because Bosha Tanjevic um, coach in the beginning of my career, he, he taught me, he said you need to be ready, you have your quality to do that, so I'm trying my best to help the team in every possible way. Basha Tanjevic was a key figure at the start of his career. Now that role belongs to Zelko Obradovic. Tanjevic like, helped me a lot to, to get in Euroleague and uh, teach me a lot of stuff, how to be a better player, but a little bit uh, when he came, he put my game on this, the other level. Emir was born in Zhenica, Bosnia-Herzegovina 26 years ago, and he is proud of the fact that he is still in the same club. To stay in one team seven, seven years, to one EuroLeague team, and after I have contact three more years, then I will stay here ten years. That's too big accomplishment for me to to have trust from the from one you know team in this kind of When he arrived in 2007, he was very young, but he was taken under the wing of two teammates. For me, let's say who were with me the most, Mr. Tujan and Romeron, and they were, I'm very good friends with them and they helped me a lot in the beginning. Emir is now a leader of his team, but there was always one player he looked up to. I like uh, Dimitris Diamantidis, he's one for me the greatest player who's playing now in, in Euroleague. And I would like to play as him. He, I mean, I'm trying to be as, as good as he is. His main strength is his versatility in both offense as well as defense. There are two moments that particularly stick out for him in his career. There was a game against uh, Partizan in, in Belgrade and I scored like three point shots from like nine, nine and a half meters. That was for me the best decision. What he managed to do in defence a couple of years ago is almost impossible to repeat. The game was against Power Electronics Valencia on January 27, 2011. We were two points up and then somehow we lost the, we lost the, the ball and we were running back to the defense and I saw him on, on with my eye on, and I saw, oh my God, if he's if he going to catch it, he's going to make it for sure. So I helped, he catched the ball, he tried to shut, I blocked him, but somehow the ball went straight back to his hands and I saw it again and I just jumped, I closed my eyes and I jumped, but somehow I blocked him twice and it was amazing, fans were crazy about it and we won the game again. In the game of the week against Laboral Kucha Vitoria in Istanbul on Thursday night, Emir contributed with 10 points. Fenerbahce Ulker soon took a solid advantage at the end of the first half, 59-38. The hosts then controlled the score and eventually won their second game in the top 16, Group E, 98-64, with five men in double digits led by Bojan Bogdanovic, 17 points.
One of the biggest icons of the Turkish Airlines Euroleague this century is Dimitris Diamantidis. Dimitris is now 33. He moved to Panathinaikos Athens back in 2004 and is now playing his 10th season with the Greens. But he still remembers his first steps. When I came in this team, uh, I knew that uh, I will come in Panathinaikos and I will play for a team that he is in the top, they are in the top level. They always, you know, take championship, uh, they try for the final fours. And I was so happy that that's why I came here. So when you come uh, from a small team like Heraklis and you have to change uh, everything. For me it was, the philosophy here was very difficult but uh, I gave my, my best. six-time Euroleague best defender is probably the most versatile player in the world. He really can do everything, and not just in defence. Over his career, he has accumulated 928 assists, 374 steals, and an average of almost 10 points in 212 games. What is really important is the team philosophy, which is almost a way of life at Panathinaikos. I was trying to help the team uh, in the court with uh, many ways. For example, if I can play defense, if I can steal the ball, if I can block the ball, if I score, if I can pass the ball, whatever I could uh, make in the court and uh, to help the team, that was easy. Also, the philosophy of uh, the team was, you know, like this, you know, everybody played for the team, nobody was uh, out of the system. That's it. In eight seasons and 169 games with coach Jelko Obradovic, Dimitris learned many things, maybe everything he knows about basketball, but one thing particularly impressed him. I didn't expect that basketball is like this when I came in this team. Mr. Obradovic, uh, everybody knows that, that he's a great coach, so... First of all, I didn't expect that basketball have so many details. The scouting was more difficult, everything was more difficult. And uh, for me, it's something that uh, strange. But uh, year by year, I was more ready to, to become a member of this team. Yamantidis is the undisputed leader of Panathinaikos, but when a new player arrives at the club, they must be ready to put the team before everything else. Everybody knows then that uh, when they come in Panathinaikos, they're coming in a big team that uh, always must try every game to give 100%. And I don't think that I'm responsible to teach uh, someone. I don't feel like this. However, there is one thing that is even more important than basketball. Family for me is the most important. Even now that uh, I have a small kid, it's, I'm trying to be more responsible, I'm trying to be more better person, I'm trying to be more calm. But I believe the family is most important than uh, everything. Ryan Toulson, the 28-year-old shooting guard of Unicaja Malaga, comes from a great basketball family. He is the cousin of a big international star like Andy Toulson, who played in the US, Italy, Greece and Spain, and is nephew of an NBA playing and coaching legend, Danny Ainge. They were very influential, uh, especially Danny. Growing up, uh, he was playing for the Phoenix Suns, and I am from Phoenix, and so he was uh, very influential in teaching his son, and I was always with him. We were, we were best friends, and so he taught me a lot. When we would go to the basketball court, he would always stop us when we would play one-on-one, -on -one, and he would teach us a lot of stuff that was uh, really helpful. When I left for college and uh, I finally realized that I could play professional basketball and I, I knew I was going to go to Europe and not in the NBA, that's when Andy really helped me with a lot of tidbits and information. 
on uh, what would help me become successful. It was the right choice. Ryan is now playing his fifth consecutive season in Europe and is improving his presence on the floor year after year. In his first Turkish Airlines EuroLeague season, he is already a point of reference for the team, stepping up his performances in the top 16 and making himself a known quantity in Europe. He is following in the footsteps of his cousin. Watching Andy uh, growing up in, in Spain and then now being able to come to Europe and play and, and, and be in his position, uh, it's, it's been really helpful and it, it's, been, uh, it's been really fun being able to talk to him about his experiences here in Spain and, and, and mine that are happening right now. Of course, the constant comparison with his uncle and cousin have sometimes made the challenge harder. But at the end of the day, having basketball in his DNA also gave him many advantages. People didn't know me as Ryan Toulson, they knew me more of Danny Ainge's nephew. And so they uh, really wanted to prove themselves against me and not just anybody else. Uh, and so for a while it was, it was rather difficult, but uh, uh, I was able to make a name for myself. And so uh, it, it kind of helped also build my reputation as a, as a good basketball player with, with uh, Andy as my cousin and Danny as my uncle. Ryan has already experienced moments of personal glory. For example, when playing for Utah Valley State, he produced something incredible in an unforgettable quadruple overtime win. But he does not seem distracted by the flash of the cameras and remains focused on the game. I had recently scored 63 points in one game in college. When I went back to Utah, uh, Matt Clayton, who's a very famous photographer in, in college, he asked me to do an interview and do a photo shoot, so it was just a, a one-time thing. So I've, it was just one time and I, I don't consider myself a model. Ryan scored 20 points on Thursday when his Unicaja hosted Panathinaikos Athens in a very important game. After the first 13 minutes, during which the Greens had their biggest advantage of seven points, the players of coach Johan Plaza reacted and took the lead through Sergi Vidal. After the break, the game continued to be very close until the last quarter. Here, Toulson took the score to 69-61. Then Nick Cannon medley top scorer with 21 points, increased the gap to 12. And eventually, the final score was 87-71 for Unicaja, which leaves both teams on a 3-3 record. Quite a few players have won the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague two seasons in a row, but very few have been able to win it a third. Ceska Moscow's Karl Heinz has the chance to rewrite history, along with some of his former teammates and friends at Olympiakos, and this year is no different to the previous two. His goal is to go all the way. Winning the championship is motivation. This, this season, I mean, it has a special significance that you know, I have the opportunity to to be one of the few players that can have a three-peat. So for me, I mean, it's a big motivation. I think with that, I mean, it adds a little more extra motivation that I could be one of those, you know, one of those significant players in, in the history of your league. This is only Carl's fourth season in EuroLeague. When he arrived at Broza Baskets Bamberg in the 2010-11 season, he had no experience of EuroLeague basketball. Immediately, um, from my, my, my very first season, even before I got to, to I got the opportunity to play for the EuroLeague, um, my goal was always to you know to reach and play to the highest level um, in Europe. So I mean, immediately as soon as I got here, I used to watch all the games on uh, on TV um, and you know and try to study some of the best players. 
goal deflected the last pass of the first title winning game, denying Seska a chance to win, which will stay with him forever. Sometimes it takes a while for the achievement to sink in. I, mean, I still really can't believe it, um, you know, because my career is kind of still going on. So I really haven't had a, a, a big opportunity to kind of look back and, and kind of realize exactly, you know, what happened. Um, but I mean, as of right now, I mean, I mean, it's, it's probably one of my biggest accomplishments um, of my career so far to be part of a, a historical moment, um, not only in, in basketball, but probably all of European sports. Because like it's, it's I guess it's so short lived. I haven't really had the opportunity to really fully grasp the, the the entire the entire significance of it. Nothing in basketball is left to chance. Pines may be short for a centre, but his determination and competitiveness have taken him to the top of the game. Preparation, I think, is the key. Anything in life, um, anything being successful, and I think that's one of the things that I, I take into account. One of the things that I, I kind of wanted to, to kind of be a staple of my career and a staple of, of the way I play is that I want to be able to play well um, in, in high-level situations. I mean, if you look at all the, the best players and all the great players in, in the history of, of any sport, um, they're able to, to raise to the occasion um, when their team needs it. After two great games against Seska in the last two Final Fours, he has now hopped over the fence to join them. I feel so happy and feel, you know, so, so, so fortunate to be able to, you know, to, to be a part of the team now um, after, you know, facing them the past two seasons and, and having, you know, to, to worry about how to guard Sasha, and the, Sasha Khan in the block and, <laughs> and guarding Tia Doshas on the pick and roll. Now I can kind of go on the opposite spectrum and, and, and be teammates with them and learn from them and, and hopefully win many games with them. scored 11 points behind Nenad Kirstic's 24 and was one of Seska's top scorers in the tough road game against Galatasaray Liv Hospital in Istanbul on Friday. It was a Sasha Kown dunk that gave Seska a two-point lead at the end of the first quarter. Then, a triple of Vitali Fridsson increased the gap to 21-33, but another three-pointer by Ender Arslan reduced the gap to three at the end of the first half, 37-40. After the break, Seska tried to move away once again, first with Kirstic, then with Heinz. But again, the hosts reacted and even led through Henry Domikant. Vladimir Mitsov gave Seska another break that was almost tied by Carlos Arroyo in the last minute. However, it was not enough to change the result. Seska won 71-74. From Warner Robins in Georgia to Greece, from the Harlem Globetrotters to the reigning champions of the Turkish Airlines Euroleague. This is Brenton Petway's story, otherwise known as just Brent, one of the leading lights at Olympiakos Pireos. A 28-year-old forward that is living up to his billing. Brent knows Greek basketball well, he has spent four years there, and last year during the All-Star Game, the man known as Air Georgia put on a real show. Somehow they found out that I knew the words to a Greek song, and they asked me to sing it, and it was an All-Star Game, so it wasn't so serious. I could have a little bit of fun with it, and I thought it would be nice to bring a show that the Americans can bring a little bit of Greek culture into the game. It was fun. I was just trying to do my part. The dunk contest is something I do all the time. And uh, the singing was uh, also something I do in the showers. <laughs> it was just something to make the game fun for everyone. His spectacular game and his very positive attitude are what make him so popular with the fans. And providing entertainment for the fans and distracting them from the economic crisis that the country is going through is one of the most important things for the Olympiakos forward. Sports in general, I think, can take people's minds off of what's going on, you know, maybe at home or maybe how they're not, they're not happy with their situation. It just gives them something else to think about and uh, take the stress off of them, even if it's just for one hour, two hours. For Brent, sport is a source of happiness and tranquility. And when it comes to pure entertainment in basketball, there is one team that dominates the scene. 
I used to watch the Globe Trotters when I was very small, and uh, it drew me in, you know, as a kid to see these guys playing basketball, something I love, and also having so much fun, you know, making jokes with the other team. And uh, it was definitely a dream. A dream that came true four years ago, just as his career was taking off. In 2010, following the season in France, he and the Harlem Globetrotters crossed paths. I decided to give it a chance, and it was something, you know, a great, a great experience for one year to go around the world traveling. Just being able to experience so many different cultures and see so many different places that I never thought I would see, it was really fun. At the end, I missed the competition of basketball, so I had to get back to it. An experience that has broadened his horizons and taught him that deep down basketball is a game and should be lived that way. Basketball is not always, you know, life and death. You know, you have to have some fun while you're doing it. And it's, uh, it's many more serious things going on in the world than just a basketball game. For Brent, basketball has been a source of enjoyment and a way to mature as a person, to push himself to overcome his own limits and to challenge himself before even challenging his opponents, both on and off the court. When uh, you're playing sports, some people might think you can't do something, so you go work on that. And in life, some people might tell you that you can't, you won't be able to do this job, or you won't be able to do that, but you want to prove them wrong. So I think sports puts that attitude inside of you. In round six of the top 16, Justin Dentman earned the B-Win MVP award for the second time this season. Dentman led Zalgiris Kaunas to their first top 16 victory over Partizan Nis Belgrade on Thursday. The 28-year-old point guard from Carbondale, Illinois, who is playing his first Turkish Airlines EuroLeague, improved upon the fantastic performance from round five of the regular season when he won the award with an index rating of 32 by reaching a personal index rating of 33, the best of the round. Justin scored 23 points on two for two two-pointers and five of 10 three-point shooting from the floor, plus all the four free throws. As well as that, Justin added five rebounds, six assists, one steal, one block and drew eight fouls. Let's check out the top three plays of the week. Number three, Istanbul, Turkey. Great chemistry again between Arroyo and Men Sabonsu going up for the athletic alley -oop. Another great combination. Number two, Barcelona, Spain. Alex Abrines for the home team drives inside and what a finish. Powerful dunk. An explosive offense from the top 16's only unbeaten team through Alex Abrines. And the number one play of the week in Piraeus, Greece. Olympiakos with the ball. Kostas Lucas sends it up and Brent Petway goes up with hang time to throw down a brutal alley-oop. Partizan, Nis Belgrade and Galatasaray Live Hospital Istanbul will share the floor in the next game of the week in a real survival match to see if either will advance to the playoff quarterfinals. Scoring ace Bogdan Bogdanovic, who's averaging 16.3 points per game so far, will lead the home team, helped by big men Joffrey Loverne and Nikola Milutinov in a very tough challenge that they need to win to fuel their hopes of staying alive. Milenko Tepic will have a big duel on his hands against Carlos Arroyo at point guard, a man capable of finishing and creating for his teammates. Malik Hairston outside 
Milan Matsvan and Pops Mensa Bonsu in the paint will have to call upon all their experience against the young and talented players of the home team to help Galatasaray get a pivotal win and inch closer to the playoffs. Enthusiasm and talent versus experience and team-orientated game. Partizan Nis Belgrade and Galatasaray Live Hospital will face off in the top 16 round 7 game of the week at Combank Arena in front of a large and noisy crowd. Presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport.